For the base color that you can see here, I used primary red, alizarin crimson, and white. I just mixed that up and used that for um, the base color of the entire flower. I did leave a little bit of the alizarin crimson unmixed so that if I wanted to add some blend in some darker shades, I would have that ready. I just gave that a good mix and as you can see here, I'm just filling in all of the petals with this base color. For the edges of the petal and the parts that I want to be highlighted, I'm just going to take some of that color that I mixed and slightly thicker layer I'm going to add to those edges because once the petals are covered you can't really see the lines and I want to remember which areas I want to add those highlights I wanted to um, add the highlights to. I started on black because the painting is going to have a lot of shadow and dark areas in it. I just used black gesso to cover the canvas that I had. I had painted something on it previously and I just covered that with some black gesso, let it dry, and then sketched on the flower. A friend had sent me a reference photo of this gorgeous flower that had bloomed in her garden. And here you can see this is where I start adding a thicker layer of paint just to where those areas that I want highlighted and those lines are so that I can keep track of where those areas are after the flower is covered with paint. And I just went in and I did this for all the petals. Here you can see I'm starting to add some darker violet color. I used um, Windsor Violet, and this was a Windsor Newton color. Um, I just am, have been using the tubes I have left over. So some of it is Liquitex, some of it is um, Liquitex Basic, some of it is Liquitex Heavy Body, and some of it is Windsor Newton. And here I'm just adding in that Windsor Violet into the areas that I want to be darker that are going into the flower or have some petals throwing shade on them. And I'm just taking that, putting it into the bottom edges that are going into the flower and then blending it with a little bit of that pink color I made to get a nice gradient and it's easier to do when you've got both the colors wet because it's acrylic it dries pretty fast so I was just wiping off the brush and taking those colors and blending them in right then and there with oil you can go in and blend things later but with acrylic if you want it if you want that nice blended look then you've got to do it right away so you have to wipe your brush off a couple times to get rid of the excess paint and the color that um, you don't want too much of.
took out some white to start adding in where I want the highlights. And of course, I will go over these afterwards and paint over them if I add the white in now. It's just easier to keep track of which area is going to be highlighted, which area is going to be darker. And I will go over this with pink later on after it's dry. And that white will show through and make that area nice and bright. So I just do the same thing basically for all of the petals. Just adding in those dark areas and those highlighted areas. This is where I started adding some naphthol red, naphthol crimson. And this was the Liquitex Heavy Body. You can use any paint you have. And I mean, these colors are the ones I kind of picked out from the photograph. You can change the colors around. The Naphthol Red uh, Crimson is just where I want to add those highlights of where the sun isn't falling directly on the petal, but reflecting off of the back petal and kind of making the petal in front of it glow with that um, deep crimson kind of color. So I'm just working on these couple petals to see how these colors are working out before I go and cover the rest of the flower. So if I want to change anything, if something doesn't look right, if I want to add a color, make something lighter, darker, this is where I'm going to figure out. Again, I'm just adding that Windsor Violet into the darker areas of the flower. This petal is going in to the center of the flower, and it's also got some of the edges curling up on it. So the middle part is really kind of dark, shaded, with a bit of that glow. And of course, there's going to be different areas where there's going to be some shade falling or anywhere that it's away from the light. It will be a bit darker. And this, of course, is that pink color again. I'm just going to go over the red so that it's not so bright and not so um, distinct. I want it to be all blended and just have that red glow, but not look like a big red spot in the middle of the petal. And once I know what I want, which colors I want to use and what's working, then I'm just going to go in and continue that process with each of the petals, adding the highlights, adding the dark areas, adding the mid-tones, adding those little bits of naphthol crimson where I want that light to be hitting something and reflecting off the back of the petal so it has that nice effect of that light glowing in it. To make um, the darker areas even more defined, I'm taking a little bit of black. And while that Windsor Violet is still wet, I'm going to blend in the tiny bit of black into the darkest areas just to define them more. Adding that to the very center, which is completely dark. And also behind that petal where that petal is throwing a bit of shade on the petal behind it.
I like to have a much darker color in the darkest areas. I know some people will just use dark blue or burnt umber, and I really like using black though. I know it makes a really stark contrast, but that was the look I was going for. And of course I mixed it in with a bit of the violet. And again, I'm just continuing that entire process with all of the petals. So here you can see I've gotten all those colors where I want them. And now I'm just going to take that base color again and go over and blend that into all the areas of the all the petals. Pull that down over the very dark areas that, that are in shadow, as well as the parts that are highlighted. So you can see now that the white underneath is helping that base color be really bright where the highlights should be. And um, the violet underneath is showing through the areas that are in shade. But it's more natural now because you've got that petal color coming into all of the petals, that base color. And I'm even going to cover up a lot of the red just because I don't want that distinct red color standing out, but I just want that effect that it's light catching in the darker and the more, those more, um, the redder shades. Here I'm taking phthalo green and I'm going to start adding in those leaves and some hints of the stems. 
the focus is going to be on the two flowers. So the leaves are going to be just hints of um, what is there, where the light is catching them a little bit. As you can see, the phthalo green looks really dark on the black. And I'm going to show you how that is going to change when we add some yellow. So you can see by adding the yellow how that gives the impression of the light just catching on those areas of the stem and leaf. And it just gives the impression of it fading into the darkness. I just had a medium yellow. Any yellow would work. I just want to brighten up those areas. And of course, acrylic dark, dries a bit darker, so I, I did go in again and highlight those areas again with some more yellow. Then I waited for the flower to dry and I went in with that base pink color again and I just basically went over everything to blend it right in so those white highlights weren't peeking out so dramatically. And I just want to say thank you to Anna Thompson for sending me this gorgeous picture that I used as reference from her garden.